Okay. This is Brian Wheeler, uh, Wheeler, the executive director of Charlottesville Tomorrow, and he's going to talk about a little bit about this project that he did, um, crowdfunding, and um, just tell us about it, Brian. Yeah, uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia, there's been a, a project on the books for many years to do a bypass around our community, around an urbanized stretch of highway, and people have long wanted to build a bypass around that part of the community to speed up traffic north and south in Virginia. Um, everyone pretty much thought that project was dead. The plan was on the shelf, but then uh, there was a midnight vote by our Board of Supervisors. It was unannounced. It was not on the agenda and a four vote to three vote vote, um, I'm sorry, four to two vote, um, made that a reality again. So the plan was brought back to life and it had, had not been talked about in 10 years. And so we had this major highway project that was suddenly back in action and we didn't have any good visuals to show people. The first thing we did was we scanned the engineering drawings and just overlaid them in Google Earth so that people could see in a flat format where the road was going to go because this was all brand new news to a lot of people in the community. Uh, it was important to see what part of the countryside, what part of the urban area this 6.2 mile highway was going to intersect with. Uh, we wanted to show better pictures though. So we had experience building community infrastructure virtually. Uh, we built virtual buildings, virtual dams, virtual pipelines in Google Earth using a product called SketchUp. SketchUp's a free modeling tool. And it lets you place models into the real world terrain in Google Earth. So we hired an architect, handy in those skills, asked him to build the Western Bypass virtually. And we did that twice. We built two different versions of it as the plan evolved. And uh, the idea was to show the community exactly what was being talked about, let them make an informed choice. Yeah. So, so how long was that process? How long did it take you to do all that? Uh, it probably took um, three months to, to bring all that together. So what was the outcome? What happened? Um, so where did you publish the models? Um, how did you have a conversation about this afterwards? We published everything on our website and uh, we certainly drew attention to it in the daily newspaper. We have a partnership with the newspaper, so we were reporting on the bypass in the newspaper, drawing people's attention to the models in that way as well. Uh, the models were embraced by the community and, and held up as um, uh, demonstrations of, of their points of view, whether they were for it or against it. Uh, but, it but it was, people had to sort of agree that this is the best picture of what it is we're talking about. Uh, because we had it built right off the drawings. Okay. Um, and so what was so what was the outcome? At, at the end of the day, what happened was uh, local elections, and the people that show up to vote make a difference, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we spent a lot of time on local elections as well. This was a major election issue, and the the supervisors that voted at midnight to support this project ended up being voted out of office, and uh, uh, new leadership came in, both locally and at the state level. A new governor was elected, the governor was opposed to the bypass, the new local board of supervisors was opposed to the bypass, and so they killed the project. They killed the project, and there was opposition by a school nearby, and a university kind of wanted it, so there was kind of a uneven um, kind of um, a champion and uh, adversary on that sure. point. But do you think that had anything to do with the outcome? Sure. I mean, when, as people get engaged, um, they learn more about a project. They learn this was going to go through a African American historical graveyard. Um, different issues like that come to the surface. Very good, very good. Thanks so much for telling us about your project. Thank you. Okay, that's um, Ryan Wheeler. He's a publisher of a local news organization.